Our story today is called Read All About It, and it's written by Laura Bush and her daughter, Jenna Bush. The Bushes have a very famous family. The grandfather of Jenna's, George H.W. Bush, was the 41st President of the United States of America, and her father, who is Laura's husband, is George W. Bush who was the 43rd president of the United States. Read All About It, written by Laura Bush and Jenna Bush, illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Good day, elementary school. Welcome back. I'm Tyrone Brown, and I rule the school. I'm a professional student and a class clown. Let me introduce you to my pals. The kid genius in the glasses is Edmund. Jane is the girl with the legs like branches. And this is my best friend, Big D. We always keep our class in line. And that's Miss Libro, our homeroom teacher. She's all right, but we don't exactly see eye to eye. Tyrone, what's your favorite book? I told her books are so last year. It's not that I despise books. I just don't prefer them. I like playing freeze tag with my friends and catch with my dad and helping my mom pull the pesky weeds from the front yard. These things are real. As I told you earlier, I rule the school. I love watching Mr. Lumpsquit scratch his head in awe when I solve the math problem of the day every day. Miss Toadskin thinks she can gross us out with her science experiments, but I live for that stuff. And of course, I'm the king of the monkey bars. I am everywhere. Well, everywhere except one place. Don't try this at your school. Miss Libro always says, Tyrone, the library is a wonderful place. You never know who you're going to meet in a good book. I say, the library is a boring place. All I will meet there are stinky pages. Every day after lunch, Miss Libro reads to us. I sit in the back and use this time more wisely. But one day, everything changed. Miss Libro was reading a book about an astronaut, which gave me the idea to create a spaceship that I sent orbiting into the chalkboard. Tyrone, please save the spaceship for science class and listen. Everyone loves this book, said Miss Libra. I looked around the classroom. Miss Libra was right. No one, not even Jane, had witnessed the launch of spacecraft Tyrone. So I listened, and the strangest thing happened. I actually liked story hour, and then my whole world turned upside down. On Halloween, Miss Libra was reading us a spooky tale about a ghost named Jasper. When Jasper, a real ghost, appeared and said, Boo, do you have a pencil sharpener? Characters started appearing regularly. During a story about our founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin stepped into our classroom flying a kite. Hey class, call me Benji. On Valentine's Day, Miss Libro read us a fairy tale. Just as the prince was about to save the princess, a fire-breathing dragon flew in the window. In the spring, Miss Libro began reading from a chapter book about a pig. She had barely finished the first page when a pudgy pig sat down next to me on the reading carpet. At first, we did not want him in our classroom. He was dirty and disorganized. He ate the most grotesque combination of leftover school lunches. But as the weeks went by, we fell in love with that butter ball. He was witty and kind. Jane taught him manners, and he began to eat like a proper gentleman. And he took over my role as class clown. His jokes were hilarious. What does a family of pigs do at an all-you-can-eat buffet? Pig out! And then a terrible thing happened. A real crime. It was a rainy Monday when Miss Libro finished a chapter book. 
As she closed the book for the final time, the pig disappeared and didn't come back. The whole class was in hysterics. We loved our little porker. When recess came, I knew what had to be done. Don't worry, this pig napping is just the case for Tyrone and his posse, I said. Big D, Edmund, Jane, let's go. We'll solve this case if it's the last thing we ever do. Jane thought he was in the cafeteria. Hurry, Miss Gravy will cook anything she can get her hands on. But luckily for the pig, we were having spaghetti for lunch. Ooh, I haven't seen him, but he would be tasty for next week's breakfast. Edmund thought he had a lead. Those oinks coming from Miss Tone Deaf's room must be our pig. But no, it was just a kindergarten class singing Old MacDonald Had a Farm. We were about to give up hope when Big D had a breakthrough in the case. I've got it. I bet Coach Smith has recruited him for the football team. He would be great at defense. But again, there were no leads. Coach Smith said he hadn't seen a pig anywhere. Recess was almost over and there was still no sign of our pig. Miss Libro, we've searched for our pig everywhere and we still haven't solved the case. Are you sure you've looked everywhere? <gasps> everywhere? That was it! Of course, we hadn't been everywhere. There was one place we hadn't looked. I grabbed my friends and we were off to save our pig. I boldly went where I had never gone before. And there they all were. Benjamin Franklin, Jasper the Ghost, the dragon, and in the middle of the room was our pig. And then I had the most brilliant idea ever. Miss Libro, let's read here in the library. Take it from me, Tyrone. You never know who you are going to meet when you look in a book. <laughs>